What happened to Russell Westbrook? After being such a dominant force with the OKC Thunder for years, at this point it appears that Westbrook is no longer anywhere near the same player that he used to be. But quickly before we get the video started, for those of you who may not know, I'm Juicy Sports, I make opinionative NBA content, and if you guys enjoy videos similar to this, hit that subscribe button, that like button, and that post notification bell. I also want to quickly mention that I recently started up an MMA channel, and if you guys are interested in that, the link will be in the description but anyways let's get into it From right around the time Westbrook was drafted, all the way up until the 2019 season, Russell Westbrook was seen as a legitimate superstar. And game in and game out, he was putting up incredible numbers. And even during the 2016 season, Westbrook became the second player ever to average a triple-double throughout the entire season, but he also averaged 31 points per game on top of that triple-double. And for those incredible numbers, he did end up winning the MVP award that year. And even the following two seasons, he also averaged a triple-double. And overall, during that stretch, it became very apparent that Westbrook was putting up incredible numbers. But at the end of the day, I feel like that was a huge reason for why Westbrook fell off. Originally during the 2016 season, yeah, Westbrook was averaging a triple-double, and there certainly were times where he was actively looking for stats in certain games, but at the end of the day, Westbrook was playing winning basketball. He took that Thunder team in 2016 that didn't really have any business being in the playoffs to the playoffs, especially considering they just lost Kevin Durant, and even though they didn't go far in the playoffs, playoffs, I still would say that was definitely a successful season based upon the roster that they did have that year. But after that 2016 season, I feel Westbrook became too in love with the triple-double. And after that 2016 season, it became pretty apparent that Westbrook was chasing stats. And he definitely cared about his statistics a lot more than he should have. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that Westbrook didn't care about winning because of course he did. But with that being said, there definitely were some opportunities where he cared about his individual statistics too much and he was actively looking for that extra rebound or that extra assist in order to get that triple double whether or not that helped his team win and maybe Westbrook didn't even realize it at the time but he was definitely going down the wrong path and after that 2016 season Westbrook's public perception changed people now saw Westbrook as a very selfish player that only cared about his individual statistics and didn't necessarily care about winning all that much now whether or not Westbrook cared about winning at the end of the day it doesn't really matter I personally think he definitely cared about winning but if the public perception is that he doesn't necessarily care about winning at all or doesn't necessarily care about winning that much, that definitely has a detrimental effect to Westbrook. And it does so for a couple different reasons. The first and most obvious is all that talk could get to any player's head. And I definitely think it got to Westbrook's head at least somewhat. The fact that everybody was saying Westbrook was a selfish player and he didn't care about winning, I think at times led Westbrook to overthink certain things on the court and in certain stretches of games and in certain possessions, I feel you could definitely see Westbrook thinking too much out there and in my opinion I feel like all the chatter of Westbrook being a selfish player had something to do with it at the very least but the second reason why that talk would be a negative for Westbrook is chemistry because if the public perception of Westbrook was he was a selfish player and he didn't really care about winning all that much that may mean that one or maybe even multiple players that played with Westbrook at the time may have also thought that and whether or not they made their opinions known to Westbrook it doesn't really matter at the end of the day that would definitely affect the team's chemistry. And it's hard enough to win games in the NBA even if you have a good chemistry. But if you have a bad chemistry, it makes it almost impossible to win consistently. And even if you had a team that was way too talented to miss the playoffs and you did end up making the playoffs, it would basically be impossible to do anything once you made it there. And I feel like we definitely saw that to a certain extent with Westbrook. As his time with the Houston Rockets, Washington Wizards, and even Los Angeles Lakers didn't pan out all that well. And I'm not necessarily saying that it's completely Westbrook's fault. And whether or not there was a chemistry problem on those teams, I'm not necessarily saying that it's all Westbrook's fault, but I definitely think this has somewhat of an effect. Now, I guess you can also say that certain injuries at inopportune times also played somewhat of an effect on Westbrook and could be a reason for why he fell off. In my opinion, I don't really think that is the case. I don't really think injuries played much of a role whatsoever, but obviously I could be wrong. But I think the reasons that I gave in this video are more or less the truth and the real reason for why Westbrook fell off. Now, when we're 
we're talking about a player of the caliber of Russell Westbrook and we're saying that he fell off, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's a bad player at this point. Now, based upon the contract that he does have, I do think he's a player that most teams probably wouldn't want on their team. But when you take the contract out of it, Westbrook obviously still has a ton of talent and still has the ability to play winning basketball, at least in my opinion. I don't necessarily think he's doing himself many favors by playing for the Lakers. Now, obviously it's not his choice, but I don't think it has a positive effect on him. I think if he were to go to a different team that didn't necessarily expect winning right away or didn't necessarily expect winning for a while, I think that would be a huge benefit to Westbrook because he can then just focus on himself and assuming that's a young team, he could serve as somewhat of a mentor to the younger guys and maybe somewhat reinvent himself. And at that point, Westbrook would be able to focus on himself a little bit more and get back to his roots and play great basketball because at that point, he wouldn't necessarily have as much pressure on his shoulders like he does now. Now, going forward, do I think Westbrook's career is over or do I think he can get to the same level of play or near the same level of play that he was at during the 2016 season and a couple years before that? Well, at this point, I don't think he's going to ever get back to that same level of play, not in the sense of statistics, but in the sense that he was just playing at such a high level and was playing pretty winning basketball at the end of the day. But with that being said, I definitely think Westbrook could be an all-star type guy and not just in terms of numbers, I think he can really help a team and be that all star type player for them. And as I mentioned before, I think he would be best served on a team that doesn't necessarily have stars already and is more or less just a young team at this point, where at that point they could just bring in a guy like Westbrook who could be a mentor to some of the younger guys and really somewhat have a similar situation to the 2016 OKC Thunder, where they didn't necessarily have the most talent. But the fact that Westbrook was playing so well and the fact that he was able to be so free being the main guy would be a huge benefit for him. So hopefully for Westbrook's sake, and honestly for the Lakers' sake as well, they're able to move on from Westbrook, and Westbrook can go to a different team of his choice, or at the very least, just get out of the Lakers' situation, because I think this is probably one of the worst situations for him, to be honest. When you talk about the pressure of Los Angeles, alongside with the fact that he's playing with LeBron, who in my opinion, LeBron and Westbrook just don't match well together whatsoever, so I think the best case scenario for both sides would just be to move on from him. But obviously, that's a lot easier said than done, as Westbrook does have a really bad contract that's almost impossible to move. Now the best case scenario for Westbrook would be if the Knicks traded Julius Randle to the Lakers and Russell Westbrook went to the Knicks and the Knicks would just end up buying Westbrook out. Then he can just go wherever he wants at that point. So that would probably be the best case scenario. But for that to happen, the Knicks would need to get Donovan Mitchell, which is something that a lot of people are saying is very likely. But at the same time, it's been taking a long time and you never know what can happen with these deals. So it's definitely not a sure thing, at least in my opinion. But I guess we'll see what happens as time progresses. But anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Why in your opinion did Russell Westbrook fall off? But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did enjoy it, check one of these two videos popping up now. And until the next time, peace out guys.